Good day, chaps. So today's quick video will cover the airdrop aspects of Project Contentious. As these things have been confused over the years, being labelled everything from FV300 to working prototype tanks, being neither. They were in fact simply ideas to test throwing a tank out of the back of a plane. The airdrop program began in November 1956, and the first tests were carried out by the Royal Aircraft Establishment between 1958 and 1959 in Kukubri, Scotland. These days having a tank come out of a plane is nothing new. If you have to go and liberate oil from some bad-tempered goat farmers, it's fairly easy to do. Back in 1956, however, this was groundbreaking stuff. Sure, light vehicles had been tested in gliders, or slung under planes, and the Russians even considered strapping wings onto a light tankette. But prior to this, nobody had properly tested the idea of chucking a 20-ton tank out of the back of a plane in mid-flight. During the contentious development cycle, which we covered in the first parts, one of the major aspects of Project Prodigal, which covered a wide variety of vehicles and ideas, looked at lowering the weight and size of tanks, armoured fighting vehicles and even logistics vehicles, all of which had to have rapid mobility, obstacle clearing and air transportability in mind. Contentious was no different. She had to fit inside a Blackburn Beverly aircraft and be dropped with all her crew in place. However, the squishies that operate these vehicles have a somewhat nervous predisposition to being thrown out of a perfectly good aircraft in a heavy metal box usually built by the cheapest bidder and so rather pedantically requested that the idea was tested first preferably without them being in it. With the health and safety killjoys ruining the party it was decided that the next most sensible idea would be to test the vehicles using steel mock-ups in an approximate shape to the proposed tank and then increasing the weight from an initial 28,000 pounds or 12.7 tonne rig up to 20.4 tonnes or £45,000, the maximum weight the plane could carry. Both the rigs themselves and the aircraft would be closely monitored to establish three main factors. The effect on the plane losing all of its payload out of the back in one go, the efficiency of the parachutes and the landing rig, and the overall effect on the hull upon impact. Each rig would have between seven to nine large 66 foot parachutes attached and the test vehicle was then to be loaded onto a special landing pallet fitted with these 5 foot by 3 foot barrel shaped airbags below it. These would soften the impact upon landing, enough in theory that the tank was then ready to roll out fairly quickly after landing. Some 9 rigs were made in varying styles. These were made of half inch welded mild steel with ballast added to locations that would house the fuel engine and gearboxes, while on others they simply welded on old guns or tubes to check the airflow and crosswind drag and so on. While some had just wooden planks to tracks, others had soft steel all round plates added to represent the tracks but kept small road wheels to make towing them about easier. These test hulls were then fitted to a Jerry May jack system that would lift them up level with the back of the aircraft and slide in or out on greased rails inside the vehicle. The aircraft itself was modified with the rear doors removed as these open normally to the side when parked in a sort of butterfly style and doing so in mid-flight would act as huge air brakes and likely rip the plane apart. Once approaching its deployment area the rig would first deploy two smaller 21 foot chutes on the back. These would pull the vehicle out of the aircraft and then the main chutes over the rear deck would open up and if all went well the vehicle would then fall before hitting the ground, deploying its lower airbags. On these tests there were mixed results. Each was dropped between 2.5 to 2,600 foot at a speed of 130 knots or 240 kilometers an hour, with just a light to medium crosswind. The average touchdown speed was 22 to 35 foot per second on impact. Two vehicles tested worked perfectly well, with one landing in the woods and was found to still be in good condition. The others had a few issues. Three of them had problems with one or two chutes not opening, but these were still found to be in fairly good condition, despite the higher impact speeds. One was found with some damaged sponsons on the side, and only one had a total parachute failure 
and hit the ground hard, doing severe damage to the hull and body. It's possible this last test bed was the only surviving vehicle for many years, which sat on the rangers. The damage to the front and sides are very clear. It's not entirely certain whether or not she's still on the range today. Further work on the contentious airdrop aspects were cancelled when the policy on how to deploy tanks changed, mostly down to costs and capability, along with the usual incessant bickering and squabbling between the UK's various forces being one aspect. After all, while trucks and stuff kept to the roads was very much the army's business, the minute it has to fly, the RAF want their slice of that pie too. Other than that, there's not much more to say about these particular vehicles. The information from Contentious was given to the US, and several joint meetings were held back then, with the ideas and data swapped, and some of this was then later used on the M551 Sheridan, which was also to be dropped out of the back of an aircraft. None of these projects now really survive, and apart from the two contentious hulls at Bovington, almost as nothing is left of Project Prodigal, which is a shame as it was by far one of the biggest developments post-World War II. In the next and final part of the Contentious Tank series, I'll cover Contentious II, these days better known as the Rhino 6x6 vehicle. Well guys, it was a quick vid but I hope you liked it. Please do give us a subscribe if you haven't already or hit that little notification button. It feeds the YouTube demons and all that. And until next time, toodle pip.